What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today we're gonna to be doing a very popular video that I do for every single phone that releases Samsung phone. And that is the beast mode series. I'm gonna show you how to put your Galaxy Z Fold 5 into beast mode. This basically means getting the maximum performance, um, maximum battery life, and just being able to use it in the most efficient way to get absolutely everything you can out of this $1,800 foldable. Before we get started, I do wanna thank my son Jonathan for giving us a dinosaur to hang out over here today. We got the green Suko Mimus. Really appreciate that. He always gives me one for my videos. And I also wanna tell you guys, if you haven't ordered your phone yet, if you haven't pre-ordered yet, uh, if you go to my website and pre-order using my link, you'll get a free mystery box. It's only gonna be open for about another week or so as of the time of shooting this. You get a free case, you get a free cleaning kit, you get a free phone stand. Uh, I do this in the US only, it's free shipping. Uh, I use my affiliate links to cover the cost of the boxes and the shipping. So the only way to get a box is to go to my website, use my link, then send me your Samsung proof of purchase to jeff at dopetechdaily.net. Um, you do have to use my link in order to claim it. So if you already ordered, uh, you wouldn't be able to claim a mystery box unless you ordered again through my link. But uh, just a big shout out to anybody who hasn't ordered yet. You want to check it out. Links are below. So let's go ahead and get right into it and talk about all the ways to enable beast mode on your Galaxy Z Fold 5. Uh, the first one, which I always recommend, is the animations. And also another one that's a very popular one is the touch and hold delay inside the accessibility settings. So if you go to the main settings and scroll down to accessibility, um, there's a couple of things that you can do here. The first one is if you go down here, you'll notice where it says visibility enhancements. You can look here, there's a whole bunch of things that involve color, but if you go to the very bottom, there's this one called remove animations. And what this will do is it will actually speed up your time zipping around the device because it will remove all the transition windows in and out. So if I remove animations, you can see uh, if I open Twitter, if I close Twitter, right, you can see that animation when I open it is very, very fast. So there's no delay, there's no lag or anything like that when I'm doing it. Uh, you can see the difference here, actually. Let me show you the difference with animations on. You can see it's a little bit slower. Um, so if you want to remove animations entirely, um, that will allow you to zip around the device a little bit faster. Now, there's another thing you can do to actually make the animations a little bit less without fully removing them, which is what I prefer to do. To do that, you do have to go to developer options, um, which you can enable in about phone. You're just gonna go into about phone, go into your software, type on your build number five times and to enable developer options, which I now have down here. I have a bunch of videos where I've done that before. I'll drop one below for enable developer options. Uh, and then if you scroll here towards the bottom, it's not all the way to the bottom, but it's towards the bottom. You've got these different ones, window animation scale, transition and animator duration scale. I like to set all of these to 0.5, which then makes the animation still there, but the animation's a bit faster. So instead of having that jarring situation where you have no animation at all, it's a little bit faster. It still seems like it speeds up the device. Now let's go back to accessibility. Uh, here inside of the interaction and dexterity section, uh, I like to change the touch and hold delay from 0.3 to 0.1 on my phone for the S23 Ultra. But you'll see on the fold, 0.3 is actually the minimum. If you go into custom though, right here, you can see, like you can see, you can do your touch and hold, that would be 0.1. But you'll notice that it doesn't allow you to enable it. So some people had asked me about this on the foldables, you actually can't do it any less than 0.3. 0.3 is the minimum. So I don't know why it's different on the fold. I think it has to do with the display technology they use. So this may change over time. But unfortunately, you cannot change that to 0.1 like I showed on the S-Line phones in the video I did earlier this year. The next one is removing the Bixby feature when you touch and hold the power button. So one of the most annoying things for me personally on Samsung phones is when you hold down the power button by default, you get Bixby. Most people don't want that. They want this, which is the power on menu. And the way you get it is by going to settings and scrolling down to advanced features and going to side key. So if you go to side key, you know, white Bixby, that is the default. You can change that to power off, which I have now. So that's much better when you hold down the power button, it should give you the power off menu. I think we can all agree. Definitely wanna change that. You can also change your double press actions so that when you double press the power button, what it's gonna do. I like to leave the camera launch because I use the camera a lot, I have kids. But if you don't have kids, you don't use your camera that much. Maybe you wanna change it to open Facebook or another app whatever it is that you use the most, you can do that right there. The next thing is swipe down for notifications. So obviously this is a large phone. And so you don't wanna be reaching all the way to the top to swipe down to get the notification task. Um, so what you can do is long press on the home screen 
go to settings and you can scroll down here to where it says swipe down notification panel and enable that, which you see I've done here. Then you'll be able to swipe down anywhere on this large display and get your notification panel. The other one that I recommend turning on in settings or turning off rather is show um, new apps on the home screen right here, add new apps to the home screen. I leave that off. On some models of the Fold and also the Flip, it may be enabled by default. I always like to turn that off entirely just because then if you download a bunch of apps from the Play Store, they're all gonna go to your main home screens. They're gonna clutter up your home screen. And you know, since I'm an Android user, I like to have everything in my app drawer. That's why I love being an Android user, not an Apple user. So that's a personal preference, but you can kind of decide what it is you wanna do there. Uh, the next thing is display settings. So let's go into the display settings a little bit and uh, go to settings display. There's a couple things in here that are very specific to the fold. The first one is inside here, the taskbar. So when you go into the taskbar settings, that's this guy down here, you can choose to one, show recent apps or not, which is over here. That is those two apps. If you turn it off, it won't show them anymore. That's a personal preference, obviously. And you also have the option to show and hide with the touch and hold. So you can touch and hold, and the taskbar will either come up or go away, depending on what you do. If you turn this off, touching and hold here will do nothing. I personally like to leave that on, and I don't think it's on by default. So you probably want to go in there and switch the touch and hold on. Makes it a lot easier to use it. And this taskbar is really a revelation, because of course you can tap this and get to all of your app drawer when you're in any app. Makes it really easy to use the big foldable screen on the Z Fold 5. The next thing inside the display settings is the continue apps on cover screen. So continue apps on cover screen basically allows you to choose which apps are going to continue on the cover screen when you fold the Z Fold 5 closed. Now, I mean, you can try to leave all the apps turned on, which I typically to enable most of mine, but some of them are not going to do a great continuing because of the app developers haven't optimized it for foldables yet, um, but I would recommend trying most of them. You can kind of see which ones don't work. Uh, the last one that's very specific to the fold, let me go up here and find it, and I scrolled right by it, full screen apps. Now, full screen apps allows you to choose which of the applications you would like to use in full screen. You can do this both on the cover display and on the main display. I would recommend using most of them in full screen because of course you want to take advantage of that large display and most people want it to stretch to fill the full screen, um, even for apps like Instagram because people just prefer the way it looks. So the Instagram on here, in my opinion, is better than Instagram on something like the Pixel Fold because of course you can't do that on the Pixel Fold and that's one of the reasons why I don't like the Pixel Fold quite as much as the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Next display settings, which is not particular to the foldables, but it's something that you definitely want to do. Decide if you want to use adaptive or standard scrolling. Adaptive will use more battery. That is the default as well. And of course, you want to decide if you want to use adaptive brightness, which can also take more battery depending on if you're in really, really bright areas. Accidental touch protection, uh, touch sensitivity, I don't leave that on because that usually has to do particularly with if you use a screen protector. I don't use a third-party screen protector, particularly on the foldables, I never do that. Um, but not even on my S-Line phones do I enable that. Uh, you also want to go to navigation bar here, and I highly recommend using the navigation swipe gestures. So if you're from Android, then you probably use these anyway. Um, and if you're on iOS, you're probably used to a slightly different version with the iPhone. It's really more difficult, I think, to use the three button navigation on the foldable. The swipe gestures are really intuitive. And also if you combine it with good lock and one hand operation plus, you can really get some good usability out of this. That's just a recommendation. You can try it and see what works for you. Okay, so those are the display settings. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is auto optimization and RAM plus. This is inside the device uh, care menu down here, battery and device care. If you go to battery and device care, inside here, first of all, I don't know why, but Samsung on device resources is causing battery drain, which is not good because I can't sleep that application. But anyway, a couple of cool things you can do. The first thing is auto optimization. I highly recommend turning auto optimization on. What this does is it automatically will restart your Samsung phone at the optimal time each day to free up some memory and kind of make it a little faster. Uh, it used to allow you to choose a particular time, but at this point, what it does is it determines when you're not using the phone, when you're sleeping or when you know kind of you're using it the least, and it'll do a restart. That'll kind of clear everything out, make your phone faster and more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. It's very simple to enable that. The next thing is if you go into memory, uh, you can enable your RAM Plus down here, and you've got two, four, six, or eight. Now, I usually leave it on four because I don't find it to be a problem, but if you figure like you're running out of RAM or things are not 
opening or if apps are not staying open in memory long enough, change it to eight gigabytes, you'll be good to go. If you do change this, it will reboot the phone entirely. So I'm not gonna do that at the moment. The other thing that you can do from within this menu is you can go into the battery settings and you can change some battery settings to improve some things. Now, I know everybody wants more battery life in general, but um, sometimes you have to be a little careful because when it comes to background usage limits, uh, Samsung leaves this enabled by default and it puts unused apps to sleep. Sometimes this can put your social media apps to sleep um, and it will delay notifications. So you can turn this off, um, but I personally like to, I, I like to have all the apps off. You can turn it off on the social media apps only so that then it won't you know, delay your notifications. If you turn it on though, just be aware that you could get some delays in notifications, which a lot of people don't necessarily want. Uh, and then the next thing is, if you scroll down to the bottom and go to more battery settings, there's also the adaptive battery setting, which extends battery life based on your phone usage. This can also delay notifications. Uh, and I found that it sometimes interferes with my, my Gmail notifications. I get late Gmail notifications. So you may wanna turn that off as well. But one thing you can do to counteract some of the battery drain from turning the adaptive battery and the background usage limits off is go into performance profile and change it from standard to light. Um, this prioritizes cooling over performance and um, obviously it gives you extra battery life. So I feel like the two things kind of cancel each other out. I still get like six hours screen on time on my, my fold. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, the light performance profile will definitely give you a little bit more of a boost. And then of course, if you need, if you need maximum power saving, um, you can go into the power saving mode right here and you can turn it on and then you can actually switch off always on display, limit CPU speed, decrease brightness and limit apps and home screen when you turn on power saving mode. Now this is really for very extreme case, you know, like you're out in the desert or something and you really need your phone to last forever, not gonna have a charger or you need it to last till you get home and you really just wanna prioritize a call, a particular call calling someone, you could turn power saving on. But the other one, the background usage limits, the performance profile, those are good enough to save battery in sort of a day-to-day -day setting. And that's what I would recommend doing for the most part. The next thing is the other end of that. What if you want to enable higher performance uh, on your phone? So one thing you can do is go into Game Booster, go into Game Booster settings. And when you go into Game Booster settings, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. So this is particularly for gaming. If you go into Labs, you can turn on alternate game performance management, um, which is a version that improves game performance and it can cause additional heating. So this is kind of the opposite of light performance mode, which will ramp up that performance when you're playing specific games. Uh, in addition to that, if you go here, you can also customize all of your other game settings. Uh, if you want a shortcut bar during your games, floating shortcut bar, uh, all of these things can kind of be done and you can also turn on low refresh rate um, if you want to save some power while you're gaming. If you feel like you're a little low on battery, you can play with that as well. The other thing that I recommend doing for games is Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos for gaming. So if you go into Dolby Atmos, both of these settings should be turned on. One of them is sometimes off by default. This gives you the optimal sound performance when you're gaming and also when you're watching videos. YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, whatever you want to watch, all the streaming services and stuff like that. And you can also play with the adapt sound and adapt sound will basically adapt the sound to your particular ears. So if you set this up and go through the test with test my hearing, it'll give you a chance to get your Z Fold 5 to give the best sound output for you. Final thing, which is also about video playback, and that is bright mode for videos. Go to advanced features, video brightness, to the bottom of advanced features and you can change it from normal to bright and then this will give you extra brightness when you're watching content in a video app like youtube netflix etc like i mentioned before um, you'll have to play with this and kind of see which if you like it or not some people don't like it some people do um, you can choose if you want to do the stock video player google tv youtube netflix i kind of turned on a case-by-case -case basis if i'm watching content that's particularly optimized for hdr if you want some high brightness content and obviously you can turn it on, you can turn it off when you're watching regular video. That's what I prefer to do, but at least check it out because it is a cool feature that a lot of people don't know about because it is buried so deep in the settings. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this beast mode video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon for future videos like this. Also, if you guys are interested in this wallpaper with the motion effects, this is from the Goodlock Wonderland module. I will make some more tips, tutorials about Goodlock and the foldables. If you guys wanna stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. 
If you haven't ordered your watch yet, your phone from the Unpacked, you can check out my website, use my links, get the mystery box. I'm gonna be open for another week or so because we ship all these in-house, me and my wife, and it takes quite a bit of effort. So um, we do stop them at some point just so we can get all the boxes out on time. Appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.